a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well and I welcome you on this important marathon session wherein we'll try to look at some very important Indian writers which are crucial from your examination point of view and also remember that you know earlier if we were talking about three to five years ago that was not paying a lot of attention to uh, the, the writers of Indian origin but you can see that you know there are a spate of questions that have started coming in. So on an average you can actually see multiple questions coming from Indian writers category and what is very interesting we'll actually take another separate marathon uh, class for that and that's that will be more than enough for you to deal with uh, like you know the rise of English in India so now English in India is a different category altogether there are two to three books which are very important in that category and we will of course try to summarize that in greater detail via the sessions okay so our primary focus would be to look at some very important Indian writers uh, when we are talking about Indian writers category here we will talk about uh, how uh, the graphic novels are coming up in a very big way when we are talking about Indian novelists the partition novel as a category post-colonial novels that are talking about the uh, the entire notion of how India is looking at the question of post-colonialism that will be covered uh, in detail we'll of course look at some samples we'll of course look at some prototypes and also whenever we are talking about Indian fiction in English how do we define this who all are included in this category is it necessary for anyone to be of Indian origin is it necessary for anyone to uh, particularly have Indian roots or someone who's talking about Indian uh, topics and themes is also included in that category and we'll give a little bit of background on uh, like you know the Indian writings in English we uh, of course this is like you know whenever we are talking about the critical tradition of fiction in India uh, and that too in English it's it's a very long history that we have to map up so certainly there are many many things that we have to cover in between uh, but still we would make sure that you know we're trying to cover all these aspects to the best of our abilities right uh, in today's class and of course otherwise I will share the schedule and as and when we'll try to complete them there are multiple writers who are important the fiction and you know uh, sadly enough earlier they were giving you questions from for example modern uh, uh, Indian drama but now they have started giving you giving you questions from the 50s and 60s novels also they give you questions on Manohar Malgonkar they give you questions uh, related to uh, all about Hind Hindustani Hatter they give you questions about Naintara Sehgal so it's it's not any rigid category now that they are focusing on uh, it's just that you have to develop a fundamental base just like your base is pre getting prepared for British writers a similar base has to be developed for Indian writings as well and remember it's a long-term commitment it is a long-term commitment and a lot of you have asked this question in your doubt that which book can be read and recommended uh, see we will try to cover almost all the things not just in today's class but coming all um, overall also we'll, we'll cover it up but please remember Arvind Krishna Mehrotra by far is a very good anthology but you know this anthology is getting properly published and compiled in 2003 so a lot of your writers of Indian origin who have written after that period for example today in the lecture we will be looking at the riot by Shashi Tharoor and the riot see you know uh, there is something which is called as uh, like you know your global recognition and when you are talking about global recognition then you can you can consider Goodreads or you can consider how uh, like you know the New York Times or there are many many other mag magazines like the Grenta magazine they are trying to categorize writers or for example British Council also has got this list uh, of authors that they keep on taking out who are uh, authors of eminence so uh, unfortunately Arvind Krishna Mehrotra's anthology gives you a very good background it gives you a very good foundation to place Indian writings but uh, it's not going to be a sufficient book when you're talking about your exams and espe especially let me tell you if you're talking about your PhD entrances it will not at all be sufficient it will not at all be sufficient but having said that it will definitely set a base then you know we can refer to Manakshi Mukherjee Manakshi Mukherjee is giving us a very good critical analysis so I will talk about all those things in today's class so don't worry let's just see how many of you have joined us um, I can see um, there is Sibu there is Dr. M. Uh, Mazumdar Nikhil uh, there is Sinha there's Akarshan Vinay Kesar Sushil Priyam Kanchan right uh, 
right? There's Mamta, there's Cosmic, there is Suhu, there's Tiasa, there is uh, Advit, Noha, Divya, Aparna, Rupashri, Nayana, there is Lichi, there is Kushbu, Gita, Sabita, Gurpi, Tatrika, there's Literature, uh, Ki Therapy, Hai Bache, there's Sneha, there is, uh, there is Anjali, Abhinav, Kushbu, Jyoti, Hai Jyoti, there is Gita, Meera, Pradeep, Rajanandini is there. That's such a sweet name, huh? Rajanandini. Akanksha, Satya, Renu, very good. Priya, hi, Sana, okay. Great, great, great. So let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have managed to join us. Excellent. Some of you are there. I thought <laughs> classroom students, I thought they'll be resting. There's Sahila, there's Sushmata, there is Munmun, there is um, Yogesh, Sonia, Moriam. Uh, I, I can see Renu, Sangeeta. I'm good, Moriam. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for asking. Thing. I was in haste. I couldn't wash my head today because I, like, you know, I had to uh, go out somewhere and then I just came running. Okay. There's Pooja, there is Abdullah, there is Geeta, there is Good Evening, uh, Zafar. So, Zafar Iqbal is from MP. Wow, beautiful. Uh, there's Dr. M, there's Abdullah, there's Kanchan, Rabia, Renu is there. Uh, thank you, Rabia. Thank you so much. Uh, there is Anand, there is uh, Rupam, Rakesh. Aziz is there. Okay. Uh, hi, Kalindi. Hi, Brinda. Hi, Renu. Did you guys miss the video again? You know, I... I yeah. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Sh. So, Bandana... Uh, Bandana... Yeah. Bandana's son got hit really badly. Oh, God. I hope he's doing well. Please, please, please take care of your child, Bandana. I'm really sorry to hear that. So, so even my brother, you know, when he was young, um, he got hit accidentally. And that was because both of us were playing together. And I remember he was bleeding profusely. And I just, and he still has a mark over here. Like a little bit, but he has a mark over here. Okay, great, Vaishnavi. That's great. Puna, amazing. All right. So let's very, very quickly get started. Let's very, very quickly get started with the session. And uh, in the session today, we will be having a very short brief quiz for you, all of you. And then we will be looking at your Indian writer. So let's quickly get started. I hope you all have already got the announcement. Your night school is starting from tomorrow, 10 p.m. daily. I will share, I will put the schedule on the Telegram channel and the schedule will, as it is, be shared with all of you. Every week I will share, uh, like, you know, on Sunday, I will share the schedule with all of you for the upcoming week so that all of you know uh, what we'll be covering. And if you want, you can do a little bit of research on that topic. Because obviously, if you're a little well versed with the lecture, then things go down a little better, right? So I will see you all uh, from tomorrow onwards. As, and it's not that we are discontinuing the 7pm class. Rather, we've got some very important uh, topics lined up for your 7pm uh, class also. I will be covering some very important movements. So we've, we've separated and segregated certain lectures for all of you we will be looking at wor works like you know dealing with absurdism realism naturalism neoclassicism enlightenment because all of you are struggling to figure out which books are important so the one of the best methods to understand and learn works is by dividing them into these categories so the 7 p.m classes will run as usual and to supplement that to supplement that you will be having your 10 p.m classes and you can join in tomorrow to see how the flow goes about uh, and we will be spending some 15 to 20 minutes of the class doing one important book also by book i mean not like you know a, one particular novelist by book i mean like you know a proper standard guidebook like a rotelage or uh, an edward albert and i will keep on telling you which book we are will be following yes tanushi the for all other students your library will be active from tomorrow evening or afternoon onwards the library will be active okay uh, and of course like i've always said that all the students who are really interested in enhancing their knowledge curve are always welcome to join the night school and the night school classes will run from uh, average it should be 10 to 11 uh, but sometimes obviously because we'll have to commit so we'll complete it like you know by 10 to 11 30 but i don't want to intimidate you it's 10 to 11 only it's 10 to 11 only the class timings in the evening so even when you're sleeping before sleeping you can just play the video and try to learn things up and also uh, it will be a bilingual class it will be a bilingual class okay that means i'll be using a lot of hindi uh, and and uh, there will be a lot of Hindi. I don't know how that that will differ a lot. But yes, there'll be Hindi that I will be using in this. So these are bilingual classes for all of you coming up on 
20 second okay let's get started with the quiz let's see how many of you are able to answer in one of marlowe's plays the hero is warned not to practice more than heavenly power permits uh whenever we are talking about the university which the university which is a very important topic i hope students who were joining regularly by now you should have compiled and created your notes on university which if you've not done don't worry i will be making you do that in the 10 pm classes rather i'll be giving you the notes myself you just have to study from those so just make sure that you know your university wits are covered properly because you definitely get one to two questions one to two questions means two to four marks and two to four marks means either you're getting a net or you're not getting a net or either you're getting a grf you're not getting grf now think about in those terms excellent fantastic a simple question yet important question christopher uh, whenever we are talking about christopher marlow please understand that marlow is a proponent of tragedy writings he's writing these tragedies he He is the person who's helping Shakespeare develop an insight for historical tragedies by writing Edward the Second. Edward the Second keeps on coming in your exams because for the very first time on stage, they are trying to bring forth homoerotic themes. They're trying to talk about Gaveston and Edward the Second, and they're saying that you know a softer king is never liked. People want ruthless monarchs. People want monarchs who are willing to fight, and only then are they called uh, really powerful or like. you know with spine monarchs that's really sad so this is an aspect that you have to keep in mind this is something that you have to keep in mind that when we are talking about uh shakespeare's art of historical tragedy writing he's getting it from christopher marlowe christopher marlowe was uh, like you know because he was born in the same year as william shakespeare the conspiracy theory states that probably marlowe was shakespeare himself and a lot of people other than that say that had marlowe lived longer had marlowe lived longer he would have past shakespeare and here when you are talking about right for example <coughs> see the jew of malta is talking about anti semitism all these things by now i'm sure even if you have not read the play agar bas aapne class bhi attend kari hai to at least you are able to understand that you know these are the works semitism anti semitism anti semitism kya hota hai this is hatred towards the jews when you have this unbiased this biased irrational hatred towards the jews that is called anti semitism okay edward the second is a brilliant example of historical writing that is being done by christopher marlowe dr faustus as most of you have written is the right answer right whenever you talk about the faustian myth please remember the faustian myth is very similar to the myth of icarus icarus had wax wings and he is referred to in the prologue of dr faustus dr faustus goethe is also writing the faust myth uh when we're talking about oscar wilde he's also experimenting with the faustian myth icarus had wax wings and he was told not to go close to the sun but he went obviously in excessive heat his 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 wings just melted whenever you try to overreach look at adam and eve 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 tried to overreach whenever anything which has been told to you that you're not supposed to be going beyond this and you try to move beyond that you're trying to overreach you're trying to overreach your own capacities and the the consequences are always lethal the consequences are always lethal tamble in the great telling us about a machiavellian character how uh, like you know we can we can clearly see see even when you talk about Jew of Malta Jew of Malta also Barabbas is like a Machiavellian character and Tamble in the Great is also showing you that how a leader has to be Machiavellian a leader needs to rise to power however there's this tragic end also that is shown right so um all the important themes literally we can see in Christopher Marlowe they come alive they come alive and Marlowe is very important let's see at the classroom platform i think most of you were able to answer this question fantastic fantastic very good very good uh i can see modium geeta renu jyoti everyone has answered it correctly rabia wonderful wonderful all right let's very quickly go on to the next question very simple yet important question and in uh, like you know the coming days we will be doing so uh, there was a request for a session on uh, so i will tell you uh, now please remember uh, from monday that is tomorrow onwards all your requests can be raised via the doubt platform that is there so 
we are having the doubt platform you are having the doubt platform that is a part of your grade up studio right now what you can do is you can raise all your requests for example uh, the few requests that we have we will be definitely working on um, there is a doubt section that you have on the grade up studio platform so you can go to the grade up studio platform and raise your doubt you can even put it on the comments if you want you can put it on the comment section also here in youtube and uh, one very important one was most important writers so we will definitely be conducting a session on the most important writers say uh, net no doubt i know that we we have more than 1000 writers and poets and uh, like you know short story writers but there are uh, like you know about 100 to 200 writers which are very important and they are like coming again and again in your papers right so of course we will look at that then there was another one on journals we will be scheduling a session on journal writing also and there was one more session i'm forgetting it but i've written it down so you can raise your request for any session and short stories one such session majority of you have got it right majority of you have got it right see james joyce is a very important modern writer james joyce is a very important modern writer and via the 10 p.m classes at least all of you will be able to like you know have modernism and postmodernism on your fingertips because they are very important topics they're very important units right now when you're talking about the short story collections by joyce which is very very popular all of you are absolutely right dubliners is the right answer i can see that at the classroom platform also most of you sorry have answered it correctly uh manasi aman um there is uh mamon has answered it correctly brinda puja sejal kalindi kanchan sonia very good shabash uh there uh, so kanchan kalindi have answered the question again and again okay perfect see when you talk about anton shekhov right when you're talking about anton shekhov from russia when you're talking about james joyce uh trying to uh, capture the uh, the uh, the condition of the irish people these are very popular edgar allan poe rip van winkle written by washington irving these are some storytellers who are coming again and again in your papers right these are some storytellers so for example example you get questions that are coming from washington irving uh, washington irving is a favorite he is an american writer who's writing works like uh, like you know he he's he's using the the pseudonym of geoffrey creon he's using the pseudonym of geoffrey creon and he's writing sketchbook he's writing sketchbook and he is one of the important writers who's writing short story fiction right edgar allan poe is also writing detective short story so edgar allan poe edgar allan poe is also writing your detective short stories because you know he says that shortness is really important for captivating the audiences and keeping their attention intact that was important then when you're talking about anton shekhov is also a very popular writer that you keep on getting then you are having uh, anton shekhov Anton Chekhov is a very important writer who says that you know that that uh, medicine is of course my lawful wife but literature is my mistress then you are having Gogol Gogol is again a very important short story writer because he is writing these very crisp and important short stories like uh, like you know which which are actually telling you about the reality of the world like overcoat then you have Franz Kafka who's also being asked in your exam so we will talk about all the short story writers Writers. Uh, we will discuss about how the short story, even in Canadian literature, a lot of people are experimenting with poetry, with short stories. I don't know what's wrong with the pen. One second, huh? uh, because I'm writing in a different way and this, the handwriting is really bad. Okay, so do keep that aspects in mind. Yes, Mamta, we will be segregating. We will be segregating. We will be segregating and we'll be studying. So whenever you talk about these short story writers, these short story writers are also equally important for all of you, right? You need to look at all of them. You need to discuss all of them. You need to to remember now when you're talking about dubliners when you're talking about dubliners in your uttarakhand set exam for example they had asked you this question that how many stories are there in the dubliners there are 15 stories that are there so in 1914 when this work came about this question has also been asked right so 1914 when james joyce's dubliners came about there were how many short stories that were included there were 15 short stories that were included right and these short stories what were they trying to do they were trying to depict they were giving you a realistic account 
account, a realistic account of the society that was there in Dublin at that time. And particularly, there was a question. So how many stories were there in Dubliners? 15 short stories were there. What was the major theme? The major theme was to capture the middle class life. The middle class life. That was very important. The middle class life of the Irish people that was being captured over here. That is what these people were trying to capture and trying to ensure that, you know, audiences come to know about it. Right. And you know why? Why they became so popular? Because this this was written. This was the peak of Irish nationalism. This was the peak of Irish nationalism. When we are talking about the peak of Irish nationalism, this particular work was actually written at the peak of Irish nationalism. That is when people like Modgon, that is when the political parties were trying to fight for independence and they were of course getting independence also and they were trying to fight for political freedom. They were trying to create a national identity. They wanted to wake up everyone. They wanted to jolt each and every Irish person to come and contribute to the cause of becoming an Irish national. That was very important. And another question that you get is what technique has been used? So epiphany is a very important technique that is employed by James Joyce. Epiphany is a moment of sudden realization. Epiphany is a moment of sudden realization. OK, so do keep this aspect in mind. They keep on asking, even though, you know, when you when you talk about, you know, uh, Joyce's the portrait of an artist as a young man that is dealing with the concept of epiphany. But Joyce was always looking at epiphany. What is epiphany uh, uh, for example i'll give you this example today this morning my mom she follows this practice of buddhism also and uh, you know they, they were talking about human revolution that is the best revolution epiphany is human revolution epiphany is human revolution right in that in that in that uh, meeting that we, they were discussing and i was just eavesdropping maybe i was in my room but i could hear a lot of things so they were talking about that the best revolution is human revolution what is human revolution the minute i transform myself the minute i change myself and how do I change myself I change myself when I have this moment of realization and that moment of realization for Joyce is in the ordinary things imagine if you go out and you are able to see a beggar begging and then you suddenly like oh my god I have to do something for him let me start studying let me become an educator let me become prominent and then maybe I can fight for this beggar that was your moment of epiphany so epiphany can be found in moments where you are dealing with the ordinary in moments when you're dealing with the ordinary that is what he's saying the ordinary will bring you closer to moments of epiphany epiphany is a technique that he's using he's obviously very popular for Ulysses that he's writing the portrait of the uh, artist as a young man which is an example of Kunstul Ruman and some of you are mentioning Daedalus Stephen Daedalus absolutely right Stephen Daedalus is a character that you keep on getting and in countering that is of course there okay now there was one more question that had come what is the end of this uh, this particular collection the end is the dead the dead is a short story the dead is a short story and this is the last short story there are 15 short stories that are there the dead is the end one and the sisters is the first one the sisters is the first one and the dead is the last one okay so do keep this aspect in mind this is important and you know the dead when we are talking about about the dead dead is actually uh, many people have said that it is a novella only it's not a short story it is a kind of a novella so what all pointers will you all remember from here only? Agar iske baad jaake aap apna research bhi nahi kar rahe ho, to aapko yaha se kya kya leke jana hai. Short story writing mein paanche writers to bohat important hai. You have Washington Irving. Let's revise it very very quickly. Edgar Allan Poe. These are two American short story writers. Anton Chekhov and Gogol. These are two people coming from Russia, famous for their short stories, right? And they're writing other things also. Then you have over here James Joyce. You also have Franz Kafka from German, German writer Franz Kafka, just ka metamorphosis and the trial aapke syllabus mein bar bar aata rehta hai, matab aapke exams mein it comes again and again. And here James Joyce is writing the Dubliner. Dubliner is a short story collection, first point, written during the peak of Irish nationalism. Second point, there are 15 short stories. Third point, there is the theme of epiphany and it is dealing with the lives of ordinary 
middle class people and the dead is the last story the sisters is the first story ye kuch kuch points aap apni chote chote notes bana ke likh liya karo jab bhi class hoti hai taki agar by chance i understand bachche ki aapko time nahi milta hai self study ka to agar aapko time nahi mil raha hai self study ka agar aap usi class ke time pe video ko ek bar aapne dekh liya hai fir dobara se agar dekh rahe ho to pause karke 2 minute ye points likh loge they will be very helpful they will be very very helpful because you keep on getting these questions again and again theek hai so do keep that aspect in mind very important question again patrick white's classic work was is based on the story of a dash explorer dash explorer theek hai yes absolutely absolutely mockum is of course very important we will we will we'll, that is the reason we will also schedule these workshops which will really help you right which will really help you ओके okay, चलो जल्दी से बताओ यहां पर क्या सही जवाब हो जाएगा यस वेरी गुड शुभांगनी एब्सोल्युटली 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 सो दो सर ऑफ कोर्स द इन डिटेल जैसे अब uh, इसके बाद ये जो करवाया है अगर घर जाके कोई और रिवाइज कर रहा है तो उसको ये सारे पॉइंट्स भी मिल जाएंगे राइट दे विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज पॉइंट्स ऑल्सो इन अ बेटर मैनर ओके Uh, who is this nidhi is asking nidhi uh, metamorphosis and the trial are two works written by franz kafka franz kafka is a german writer and franz kafka is a precursor to your absurd thought process kyunki wahan par he is also criticizing the totalitarian regime he is also criticizing the totalitarian regime okay bachche Shabash, very good. Let's see at the classroom platform. How many of you are performing very well? Very good, very good. I can see uh, Roop Virdi is also there. Very good. Okay. अच्छा ये मुझे बड़ा अच्छा लगा कि भाई वॉस जो है इट इज रिटन बाय पैट्रिक वाइट पैट्रिक वाइट इज द फर्स्ट ऑस्ट्रेलियन टू गेट द नोबेल प्राइज इन 1973 तो ऑब्वियसली वो एक ऑस्ट्रेलियन के बारे में लिख रहे होंगे है ना सो दिस इज रियली गुड दिस इज वेरी गुड गेस बट दिस इज नॉट द राइट अप्रोच राइट दिस इज नॉट द राइट अप्रोच ये आपका सही जवाब नहीं निकला है ना वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट राइट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट पैट्रिक वाइट पैट्रिक वाइट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइटर राइट पैट्रिक वाइट इज एन एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट राइटर दैट You have to keep in mind that you have to remember. ठीक है अब ये जो क्वेश्चन है ना बच्चे ये जो आपका क्वेश्चन है ये थोड़ा सा टेढ़ा क्वेश्चन है और ये थोड़ा सा टेढ़ा क्वेश्चन क्यों है ना इफ यू रिमेंबर इफ यू रिमेंबर आई डोंट नो इफ यू गैस इन द ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड वर हैविंग सी बी एस सी सो वी हैड दिस चैप्टर कॉल द लास्ट लेसन बाय अल्फांसो दो दित राइट सो दिस लास्ट लेसन दो दित दैट वी वर हैविंग इफ यू ऑल रिमेंबर we were talking about right we were talking about how the prussians were invading so prussia kya hota hai prussia when we are talking about prussia what is exactly prussia what is exactly prussia so prussia is actually related to germany <clears throat> okay so prussia is actually prussia the the place that we are having right uh, this term is associated with the germans it's it's associated with the germans prussia is coming so whenever we are talking about prussia and the term prussian also so it was actually historically prominent german state prussia jo aapka hai na so uh, ye aap isko thoda sa yaad rakhna just like for example when you are talking about undivided india undivided india mein uh, bangladesh was also part of india and pakistan was also part of india then from 1947 till 1971 kya tha 1947 Since 1971, that you had your East Pakistan. Then after that, after 1971, what happened? The East Pakistan actually became Bangladesh. Now, when you're talking about these details, for example, your key, your Bangladeshi writers, hain, which come in your exams, which come in your exams, they're actually talking about that that fight of uh, getting, like you know, nationhood. Also, you need to know all these terms. Now, when you're talking about was, when you're talking about was, was is a classic work. It is a classic work. They've asked you a question. Was was actually the fifth novel. Was was actually the fifth novel. Acha was kyu important hai? Was isliye important hai because was was telling you the story of this 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 entire expedition which is going which is going outside right. But these people never come back. These people never come back. और कैसे पता चल रहा है कि ये लोग मर गए हैं बिकॉज द पर्सन वॉज एबल टू इंटरेक्ट विद हिज गर्ल फ्रेंड वन ऑफ द प्राइमरी पीपल वर एबल टू इंटरेक्ट विद हिज गर्ल फ्रेंड वाई आर टेलीपथी 
require telepathy and now the girlfriend cannot feel any telepathy which is an indication that they have lost them forever also the fact that this work was showing you the geographical panorama of australia the geography the geography of australia was clearly visible during the time right acha ab yahan par when you talk about there was actually a prussian explorer there was a prussian explorer called ludwig okay aapka jo ludwig hai and this question has come ek prussian explorer tha aapka aur ye jo aapka prussian explorer tha ludwig uske upar aapki was is based was was based on a prussian explorer who disappeared who disappeared where did he disappear he disappeared very very important concept bache he disappeared in the australian outback kahan pe disappear ho gaya he disappeared in the australian outback Australian outback is a vast area. You know, Australia is a cold desert. Australia, when you talk about uh, places like Australia and Canada, people are not concentrated everywhere. The density of population is only there in some areas. अगर आपने अभी भी न्यूज में सुना होगा हाल ही में टू वीक्स पहले देर वर अगेन फॉरेस्ट फायर्स दैर हैड टेकन प्लेस इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया लास्ट ईयर द फॉरेस्ट फायर्स वर टेरेबल दे वर अट्रोशियस सो देर ऑब्वियसली पीपल के नॉट इनहेबिट दोज प्लेसेज राइट ह्यूमन्स के नॉट इनहेबिट दोज प्लेसेज जस्ट लाइक यू के नॉट इनहेबिट प्लेसेज जहां पर आपका volcanic eruptions hote you can't stay over there you can't really reside close to those areas at all you have to live away from those areas because you know that a volcanic eruption can take place any time so ek aapka jo prussian explorer tha he got he got lost in the australian out outback right so that is what the work is all talking about right and you've got was you've got laura and you've got how was is actually going uh, for this expedition that is there so the question is saying look at the question patrick white's classic work was is based on the story of a to tabhi aapka jab net mein ye question aaya tha the answer key what was the answer key what was the right answer according to the answer key german became the right answer okay german became the right answer so this is something that you have to keep in mind okay this is something that you have to keep in mind please remember that yes 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 very good ye kon hai sushil danu has, has said it absolutely correctly okay yes cosmic the first lesson that we had the first lesson that we had like when i uh, yeah, shalini is got not Nostalgic. Shani is like, yeah, it was Flamingo in which you had this chapter. Absolutely. Okay. So that is what you have to keep in mind. That is what you have to keep in mind. Yes, Geeta. Right. Right. See, ah, uh, bache. Ah, uh, um, no, Geeta ne ne ye point diya. Ye kisne diya tha? Ah. Uh... Okay. Anyway, I have uh, I I couldn't see. So do keep this aspect in mind. So Voss is based on the story of the Prussian explorer. Prussian explorer. You know, ne jaan mujhe Prussian diya nahi hai, but Prussia was uh, was like you know associated with being a German state. German city thi aapka Prussia. So German becomes the right answer here, right? So German becomes the right answer here. I hope it is clear. And please remember, Voss has come many times. See, aapka solid mandala ho gaya, aapka Voss ho gaya, aapka Vivi sector ho gaya. Uh, whenever we are talking about patrick white patrick white ke almost sare works they have now been asked in your entrances right they are asked in your entrances you're commonly getting patrick white ka question you must remember that and it is not difficult because he's written 12 novels in all yeah this was also a question that was asked how many novels has he written he's written properly 12 novels patrick white has written 12 novels out of which was was the fifth novel was was the fifth novel which he had written and this became really popular also. so this became absolutely very very popular now whenever you are talking about patrick white whenever we are talking about patrick white jaise hum logo ne kaha james joyce ka technique hai epiphany we had written this abhi pichle question mein james joyce ka technique kya tha epiphany tha patrick white ka kya technique hai bachche patrick white is using the stream of consciousness technique he is the person who's using the stream of consciousness technique in australian literature so in australia he is introducing the stream of consciousness technique which was pioneered by people like virginia wolf stream of consciousness means i might be sitting over here i might be giving you the class but in my mind in my head i might be having ideas of some other place i might be having an idea oh where do i have to go tomorrow or what will i do in the morning or what will i do in the evening or what is what am i plans that i'm having right so this is very important and you know even when he was getting the nobel prize the nobel prize acceptance speech was given by him like but but the nobel prize committee had said that he is a person who's giving us a psychological narrative art 
He was a person who was famous for psychological narrative art. Psychological, psychological narrative art. He's able to open the inner minds or the inner recesses of his uh, of his key characters, right? Psychological narrative art is his forte. This is his strong point. This is his forte. Forte. This is a strong point. This is something that you know he was really known for. This is the reason that you have to keep in mind. Okay. And please remember, there's one direct question. That you get. Achha, dekho, jase aapka India mein Sahitya Academy Award hai. Right? India ka jo aapka National Literature ka price hai, that is Sahitya Academy Award. Right? Now, similarly, when you are talking about America, America mein aapko Pulitzer Prize milta hai. Then, when you are talking about Australia, in Australia, you have got the Miles Franklin Award. The Miles Franklin Award is the National Literature Award that is given on an yearly basis to promote people uh, who have written good poetry, good novels, good works of fiction. Right? So, essentially, when you are talking about Patrick White, he was not only the first Australian to receive the Nobel Prize, he was also the recipient of the inaugural prize. He was also the recipient of the inaugural Miles Franklin Prize. Miles Franklin aapka jo prize hai is just like Sahitya Academy Prize that you are having in India or you are having the Pulitzer Prize in America. right? So the Pulitzer Prize is there in America and Miles Franklin is an award that you're giving in Australia. So do remember, he was the one. You know, aisa ho gaya, he got the inaugural prize, then he got another prize next year. Then after that, he said, take me, 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 take me. And he said it in a good way. He didn't say it in a bad way. It wasn't that, you know, he was very bombastic and pompous, that he will get me, so he will get me, so he will get me. He said it in a good way, to promote Australian writers, right? To promote Australian writers. Imagine, you are first coming first, the second coming first, the third coming first, the third coming first, the third coming first, the third coming किसी और को दो है ना पीपल शुड ऑल्सो गेट दी ऑपरचुनिटी अब ऐसा थोड़ी ना कि मैं लगा ही रहूंगा सो दैट काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सोना ही वॉज एंड दैट इज द रीजन ही वॉज एबल टू कैप्चर द लाइफ ऑफ पीपल सो वेल इन अ ग्रिपिंग मैनर एंड ही वॉज ऑल्सो लेकिन नो ऑफकोर्स टॉकिंग अबाउट Uh, th this entire like you know psychological narrative art that is very intrinsic okay so solid mandala aapka aa jata hai you get questions on the vivi sector you got it recently voss is of course coming riders in the chariot riders in the chariot is also a question that was seen in one of your entrances so these are the most important writings of patrick white okay so the first uh, patrick white mein what are the things that you will all keep in mind from this lecture patrick white the first recipient first australian who received the Nobel Prize, the recipient of the inaugural Miles Franklin Award, which is an Australian-based award. The four or five works which are very important. Voss is important because it's showing you the geography, the telepathic relationship between Voss and Laura, and how it is based on the life of Ludwig, who's a Prussian explorer who gets lost in the Australian outback. Who gets lost in the Australian outback. ठीक है बच्चे तो अब ये टेक्निक आपने फॉलो करनी है याद है मैंने पिछले हफ्ते क्या कहा था कि जब वेन वी वर इन ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड एंड वी हैड दिस अकाउंटेंसी टीचर एंड शी इज अमेजिंग राइट आर प्रोफेसर वॉज अमेजिंग संगीता मैम सो वट शर्मिला मैम सॉरी सो सो वट शी वुड डू इज शी वुड मेक अस राइट ओके एंड शी न्यू कि हम लोग घर पर जाकर नहीं पढ़ेंगे तो इसीलिए शी आई ऑफकोर्स यूज टू स्टडी बट पीपल लाइक माई ब्रदर दे वर रियली बैड सो यू नो शी वुड वुड मेक अस राइट ओके राइट दिस विद द पिंक पेन राइट दिस विद द ब्लू पेन एंड दोज नोट्स वर वेरी हेल्पफुल बिफोर द एग्जाम बिकॉज वी न्यू कि पिंक पेन वाला जो है वो पढ़ना है राइट ब्लू पेन वाला जो है वो थोड़ा और इलेबोरेशन है सो प्लीज स्टार्ट फोकसिंग एंड स्टार्ट मेंटेनिंग योर प्रॉपर नोट लाइक दिस वी विल कीप ऑन मेकिंग इट आई नो आई अंडरस्टैंड के इट इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू टू लाइक यू नो रिवाइज और टेक आउट टाइम फॉर सेल्फ स्टडी तो यही सोच लो कि यहां पर अगर आप बैठ रहे हो तो इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ सेल्फ स्टडी ओनली दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस ओके लेट्स लुक एट द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन और इसके ऊपर आई विल बी कंडक्टिंग अ स्पेशल सेशन वी विल बी डूइंग अ स्पेशल सेशन ऑन दिस वेर इन आई विल टेल यू ऑल द इजम्स ऑल द इजम्स विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू पर्टिक्युलरली वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मॉडर्न लिटरेचर और विद टेक्निक्स वी विल लर्न हाउ ईच ism is associated with a particular writer how each ism is associated with a particular writer we will be looking at that okay we will be looking at that also identify the term among the following which does not relate to the movement in art or literature art or literature movement nahi hai 
ओके फैजल हैज गिवन द आंसर सत्या हैज गिवन द आंसर अब्रिद्धि हैज गिवन द आंसर साइस्ता परवीन हैज गिवन द आंसर पर्णा हैज गिवन द आंसर पल्लवी हैज गिवन द आंसर ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड लेट सी क्लास रूम में किस किस ने दिया अच्छा अब मैंने कहा दे हैव गिवन द आंसर आई एम नॉट टोल्ड यू हुज गिवन द राइट आंसर अभी तक ठीक है लेट्स सी एट द क्लास रूम प्लेटफॉर्म हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव गिवन अंगना आई सॉ द पिक्चर ऑफ योर सन वेरी क्यूट एंड अडोरेबल हाँ सो अंगना हैज सेंट अ डाउट टूडे एंड आई थिंक एक्सीडेंटली द इमेज ऑफ अंगना एंड हर सन ऑल्सो केम द वॉज वेरी स्वीट ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ज्योत्सना ज्योत्सना आप सब लोगों ने सारे दे दिए ज्योत्सना ने थ्री कर दिया है कालिंदी ने क्यूबिज्म कर दिया है सोनिया ने क्यूबिज्म किया है वेरी गुड वेरी गुड सब ने सारे दे दिए रचना दैट इज द राइट आंसर दैट इज द राइट आंसर दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड दिस इज समथिंग विच इज रियली क्रूशल देखो मॉडर्निज्म में वेन एवर वी कम एजरा पाउंड वॉट इज एजरा पाउंड सेंग एजरा पाउंड इज सेंग मेक इट न्यू और ये मूवमेंट क्या है ये दो तीन कॉन्सेप्ट हैं जो आपको समझने ही पड़ते हैं वेन एवर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मॉडर्निज्म एक तो आपका चेंज ऑफ सेंचुरी हो रहा है ऊपर से द वर्ल्ड वॉर्स आर टेकिंग प्लेस विच इज चेंजिंग मैन काइंड नोशन दैट यू नो इज मैन हैविंग एनी रैशनैलिटी एट ऑल विच इज लेफ्ट इन हिम और नॉट राइट now here you have to remember that the turn of the century is called finde sikel the turn of the century is called finde sikel and when you are talking about ezra pound ezra pound is saying make it new make it new he is saying it is a new age that we have entered and you have to represent it in a new fashion that is when virginia wolf is saying in and around in and around 1920s in and around 1920s 1910 the world changed the world changed the world had changed drastically and for this changed world you needed a new way of writing you needed a new way of writing the new way of writing was represented by various art and literature movement it was represented by various art and literature movement that you all have to remember and whenever we are talking about modernism modernism are bringing us uh, across all these movements now cubism was very popular artistic movement when you are talking about cubism cubism was something that was associated with art and tabhi unhone question mein categorically likha hai art or literature they have written it art or literature right now when you are talking about cubism cubism was ab ye kya the in sare movements ko kya kaha jata hai bachche in sare movements ko kaha jata hai avant garde avant garde ka simple matlab aapne rakh lena hai it means new movement new modern movements avant garde is new modern movements avant garde is new modern movements that were coming in right these new see what were these trying to do they were trying to revolutionize they were trying to revolutionize the way that art was being revolutionized the previous art forms or literature forms previous art previous art or literary forms that is what they wanted to do or literary forms that was their main agenda that was their main idea that is what they wanted to do that is what something that you know they were really inspired towards right and you know cubism was one of the very influential movements very very influential movements that actually had come about during that time acha ek aur cheez yaad rakhna majority of these movements are coming from paris majority of them majority of them are actually coming either from paris or close by paris so that is of course there so here what happened was that there was this person there was this person called barak there was this person called barak and there was pablo picasso so i'm i'm sure even if you've not heard about barak you must have heard about pablo picasso so there was pablo picasso and barak who were actually initiators of this movement called cubism and this was an artistic movement acha ab isme kya ho raha tha very simply we will do all of these you don't have to worry imagine if i'm talking about if i'm talking about like you know ye aapka jaise uh, ye agar for example sirf ek cube wala figure hai ye agar aapka sirf cube ka figure hai it's not a cube but just imagine if it's a cube to aise 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 kar kar ke i will make like you know a, a picture for example if this is my cube right uh, so looking at very very mathematical structures looking at shapes and all i will create my structure for example i'm just trying to create a form of art uh, just identify what is this okay uh, so you know so i have created for example 
so i but all this i will be doing through shapes all this i will be doing through shapes i have created a cat in the form of shapes so this new kind of artistic movement you can actually go back uh, there was a very very famous painting i could have attached this painting but i have not done that is a painting of the mandolin ajuna you can go back home and even check it you can go back home and you can even check it there is this painting called the mandolin by pablo picasso and usme what is happening is that a girl is playing the mandolin girl is playing the mandolin mandolin is just like you know a kind of a um, okay music lovers will kill me but it is a kind of a guitar that you're playing right now the girl is playing a mandolin and everything is represented in cubes everything is represented in cubes so you you, you are using you are using shapes to draw so it was a, an artistic movement that was very new it was an artistic movement that was very new to ye to aapka answer nahi hoga empiricism is not an artistic movement or a literary movement empiricism is is a philosophical concept which says i will observe and only then will i agree if i observe only then will i agree to certain things for example if someone comes and tells me that you know abhi uh, subah ho gayi hai i'll say no let me go out let me check it for myself and if i experience morning i will agree with you so empiricism is a belief very similar to positivism remember positivism by august comte was also saying something very similar to this it was also trying to say something very very similar to this and empiricism was focusing on that your experience is extremely important that your experience is important and if your experience is there then only will you try to your observation determines the result your observation determines whether you are believing a thing or not that is important right so empiricism was very closely as, uh, like you know associated with your enlightenment movement your enlightenment movement was something that was uh, very closely looking at empiricism the theory of empiricism and that was extremely important for them right that was extremely important for them okay acha ab expressionism pe aa jao expressionism ho gaya surrealism ho gaya fauvism ho gaya yes these days you are getting a lot of questions that you get and we'll do all of these fauvism surrealism pe to you You have got like you know numerous questions that have already been seen in your entrances previously, or when you're talking about impressionism. Okay, when you're talking about impressionism, what is the difference between impressionism and expressionism? So, ये सारी की सारी चीजें, of course, we will cover. But when you talk about expressionism, it is an artistic movement. It is an artistic movement again. It is an artistic movement. It was a modernist movement. But you know, ये आपका सिर्फ painting तक नहीं था. it was also used in poetry it was also used in poetry it was also used in poetic forms um and this unlike not coming so cubism was predominantly originating from close to paris this was coming from germany this started coming from germany to aapko origins pata hone chahiye you should know what is it dealing with you should know the people associated with the ism you should know how is it revolutionizing the art which is there how is it revolutionizing the art which is available that was also very important now what do i mean by expression uh, see for example if uh, i drink water theek okay? hai if i'm i'm feeling very thirsty and if i'm drinking water what will be my expression my expression will be ha maza aa gaya theek hai or for example like you know if, if the, uh, suddenly uh, imagine it's very hot and uh, you you switch on the air conditioner or suddenly you get like a cool breeze on your face you're like ah nice you feel good that is your expression that is your expression your expression means your moods right your mood moods are indicated your ideas are coming how are you feeling what is getting invoked within you that is important that is something that is crucial right that is something that is crucial so when you are talking about expressionism when you are talking about expressionism what you have to basically understand is that expressionism became a movement wherein you were just not interested in the physical reality i will not start describing that oh there is a there is a library over here oh there is a television set kept over here or oh, there is like you know a sitting lounge over here there's a sitting lounge there uh, no i'm not describing things i will just express my mood that here i'm feeling good i'm feeling really nice i'm feeling happier over here that is what will be expressed right and surrealism was going beyond the real world surrealism was going beyond the real world so don't worry we will do all the isms just make sure that you know you revise even if you will just revise the lecture you will be sorted for your exams you don't have to worry so this lecture we are planning and this will be uh, like you know executed in the coming two weeks itself all your modern isms will be covered over there along with who are the people associated what are the different categories which are there 
करेक्ट सो ह्योर द करेक्ट आंसर इज इम्पायरसिजम ओके बच्चे अभिनव रेड्डी इम्पायरसिजम सेज दैट आई विल आई विल आई विल वेरी एंड दिस इज वेरी सिंपल वेरी वेरी सिंपल ओके आई विल बिलीव समथिंग आई विल बिलीव समथिंग बेस्ड ऑन रीजन आई विल बिलीव समथिंग बेस्ड ऑन रीजन और बेस्ड ऑन माई ऑब्जर्वेशन बेस्ड ऑन माई ऑब्जर्वेशन इट वॉज अ मूवमेंट दैट वॉज वेरी वेरी पॉपुलर ड्यूरिंग योर इनलाइटनमेंट बिकॉज यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट योर ओन रीजन यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट योर ओन रैशनैलिटी यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट योर ओन रीजन यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट योर ओन रैशनैलिटी दैट इज वॉट वॉज इम्पायरसिजम एंड इम्पायरसिजम वॉज अ मूवमेंट विच वॉज वेरी वेल कनेक्टेड विथ द इनलाइटनमेंट स्पिरिट इट इज अ फिलोसफी इट इज अ फिलोसफी that you know that that whatever you experience that gets you knowledge whatever you experience that gets you knowledge for example that is what i told you for uh, for example if you will tell me today that you know oh tomorrow uh, there is another demonetization drive that will start i will experience it myself and though only then will i believe it or you know my sensory parts will experience it that is what we'll be looking at yes nidhi we are coming on to that we are just looking at the quiz because we have not had the quiz for many days right now okay the right answer to this question is empiricism it is not it is not an artistic movement it is not a literature movement it is a philosophy it is a philosophy it is a philosophical thought it is an enlightenment related thought right so that is something that you have to keep in mind right that is something that you have to keep in mind that will be crucial for all of you okay let's look at this kubla khan is thought to have been written in 1797 but it was not published until 1816 who persuaded coleridge to publish it who persuaded coleridge to publish it who persuaded coleridge to publish it so kubla khan right it was written uh, very early uh, it was written in 1797 but it was not published so who actually preeti uh, at the beginning of each class i have a number and even i think uh, uh, our uh, like our team is also flashing the number you can you can definitely very good aparna very good very good very good very good yeah right fantastic fantastic right now see whenever you are talking about these cult epics such as kubla khan or when you are talking about the rime of the ancient mariner the prelude these are important works these are important works that you have to understand that they will definitely be coming in your exams right they will definitely come in your exams they keep on coming in your papers and you should be well versed with what they are talking about uh, what essentially are they dealing with all those things of course become crucial okay now here when you talk about kubla kubla khan kubla khan is based it's coming right out of the dream of coleridge so sorry the dream that coleridge experienced it's it's literally getting uh, translated and converted in the form of kubla khan as you can see and thus it is like you know uh, a very very important a very very pivotal work and uh, here you can see that you know the theme of oriental literature exciting the romantics is also an important aspect so classroom students if you can remember we were doing transitional poets in the last class and if you go back to the transitional poets remember we said that these transitional poets are also coming up with the the churchyard poetry the graveyard school of poetry they are coming up with the gothic elements which can be seen which can be seen again in the romantic poets which can be seen again getting represented in by the romantic poets right now whenever we are talking about the romantic period see i understand that the poets get like you know there are a huge number of poems they often get confused but if you will make small little notes based on that we will help you out don't worry about it it will make things far more easier for all of you right it will make things far more easier for all of you because you will know because you will know that what are the other aspects which are important from your um entrances what are the most important things that you have to remember you will already know about it okay acha ab sabse pehli cheez aapka jo aata hai iske upar question that is related to your subtitle it is called a fragment it is called a fragment a vision in a dream okay a vision in a dream a vision in a dream a fragment a vision in a dream a fragment this is something that you have to remember a fragment this is the first question that comes in your entrances a vision in a dream a fragment this is the subtitle of kubla khan set exams keep 
on giving this question they have asked you this question multiple times right now what uh, basically had happened was that you know um, this was actually written in an opm induced state also opm uh, induced state so what had happened was that there was this he had had opm why he had had opm because he was having a lot of pain so opm was acting like a painkiller at that time opm was acting like a painkiller at that time and when he had had the opm he was in a drug induced state and when he was in a drug induced state that is when he was actually reading he was reading these oriental tales he was reading these oriental tales right he was reading about kubla khan the mongol emperor and what happened was that you know when he he just woke up when he woke up he he started writing uninterrupted the poetry that had come in his dream the poetry that had come in his dream like you know you you wake up suddenly and whatever had come in your dream you start penning it down at verbatim right so that is exactly what happened and uh, like you know there was a bell that rang that that is the reason he couldn't really complete the work because his line of thought got completely disrupted his line of thought got completely disrupted and that is something that you have to keep in mind okay now what happened was lord byron genuinely coaxed him lord byron actually persuaded him now why i have given you this question this question if you read about kubla khan okay if you are reading about kubla khan for example in one of your companions you will be able to see that these are a few points that are there in the first to five paragraphs only of the description in any book related to kubla khan so you get questions it's not that always you're getting in detail questions only on most important writers sometimes you get normal questions also or like you know the important introductory questions and those are the questions that you all have to get right those are the questions that you all have to strive to get right right so for example if this is a question that you will type you will get the answer within a paragraph itself that kubla khan a vision in a dream a fragment which was written in 1797 but was published because of lord byron right because byron actually had uh, 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 because he uh, a code which was prompted by byron to write about uh, to publish it the work so that is of course important uh, in restoration comedy the character names often reveal the character traits okay what trait is the name sir wilful witford reveal we will be having a, a special session a special workshop on restoration plays and we will cover the five most important playwrights the five most important playwrights will be covered there and when you talk about congreve congreve is certainly a very important character so that is where you see the character of sir wilful witwood uh, so what is the right answer excellent 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 very good uh i can see most of you have given the right answer so geeta geeta mamta faisal uh, akanksha poonam lakshmi divya draksha inayat draksha if you don't come tomorrow at 10 pm then you wait and watch i'll come to your house and i will get you because it was because of draksha only who was asking for these bilingual classes okay let's see how many of you got it right over here rachna has got it right vaishnavi has got it right uh Omed is asking who uh, whose dream was it? See, uh, basically, see what what happened. Uh, Omed, Omed from the classroom platform is asking. But she, Omed, uh, for example, if I'm reading a book right now, okay, so I'm reading a book, and when I sleep, I have a dream related to that book, and when I get up, I immediately start penning down a poem that I created in my dream. So Coleridge was in an opium induced state and he was reading about the king of Zanado Kubla Khan and when he was reading about Zanado he suddenly slept and in his dream he actually got this entire poem called Kubla Khan when he woke up he started writing then he got interrupted because of a kind of a doorbell those days of course you didn't have proper doorbell but because of a knock he got a little disrupted and therefore it is a fragment therefore it is a fragment okay those are short stories that are associated with it absolutely most of you have got this answer right three is absolutely the correct answer sir wilful witwood is a character that you are having right now please remember uh, we will of course do this but congreve's way of the world is a must read congreve's way of the world has been asked in your net 
state exam multiple times way of the world is one of the best prototypes of the novels uh, of the plays that were getting written during the restoration period and congreve i have already congreve we have actually briefly discussed also so if you go on to the telegram platform properly you will be able to get the notes of congreve congreve was a person who was a member of the kit kat club if you remember he was a person well associated with the augustan writers the augustan poets as well as the restoration uh, poets who were actively writing and he became very very popular because he was trying to popularize the character of the fop the fashionable man and you know one important theme that emerges in these works is that you always have the country bumpkin now why i gave you this question was because this theme actually even even gets transported when you talk about oscar wilde oscar wilde the importance of being earnest is also telling you about the gentleman in the country and the gentleman in the city country that is a rural place the rural place how the gentleman is behaving there how the character of the gentleman is being formed right that is of course coming in so do keep this aspect in mind that whenever we are talking about whenever we are talking about william congreve whenever we are discussing about william congreve he is a must read writer he is very critical he is very important and why is he important because he is representing the entire crux of restoration comedy he is representing the entire times the society he was well connected he was well associated he was also a member of the kit kat club he was also a member of the kit kat club which was a club during the augustan period so do keep that aspect in mind do remember that and we will of course like you know do the session on restoration comedies which will really be very helpful okay let's take two to three questions and then very quickly we'll start with indian writings this is an important question and uh, why i have given you this question not because newman is important but this type of question is important okay they can give you a minor prose writer or they can give you a poet and they can ask you another work like you know another genre that that writer has written from the following list the two novels published right identify the two novels that were published by john henry newman the two novels that were published by john henry newman what are the names of the two novels that were published by john henry newman okay so who is first of all john henry newman and then yes yes geeta we had covered a little uh, about congreve in one of the lectures so and and what are the works that newman is writing right what are the works that john henry newman is writing and which among the following were actually examples of what you can say the novels right which among the following were actually examples of the novels that he was writing okay so let's very very quickly see how many of you get this answer right okay let's see let's see how many of you are able to get this answer right and you know john henry newman he was a theologian he was uh, like you know an anglican priest he was also later a catholic priest a very very controversial figure a very controversial figure uh, when we are talking about john henry newman so what are the works that he has written what are the novels that he has written okay so if you, if you remember if you if you uh, would have read your pdfs previously you would have gone through the oxford movement remember what is the other name of oxford movement tractarianism this is a question that i had asked you in one of the quizzes also recently two to three days ago tractarianism is another name that is given to oxford movement tractarianism is another name that is given to oxford movement and john henry newman is a person who is associated with the oxford movement he is a person who is associated with the oxford movement very good very good absolutely very good very good i'm i'm glad i'm glad some of you are able to answer okay let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have answered this question again uh omit is asking what is carpe diem uh, omit from the classroom platform is asking what do we mean by carpe diem carpe diem means seize the day carpe diem means that you know you do not have a lot of time so make the most of the time that you are having today so seize the day right that is what carpe diem basically means that is what carpe diem basically means yes aparna very good very good very good right that is absolutely the right answer 
ओके अंकना सिंह नो आइडिया नो आइडिया यस 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 एब्सोल्युटली नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज दिस इज अ राइट आंसर दैट मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव एक्चुअली गिवन नाउ व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट जॉन हेनरी न्यूमैन जॉन हेनरी न्यूमैन वाज अ पर्सन हु वाज अ लिटिल कंट्रोवर्शियल व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट द 19th सेंचुरी ही इज अ पर्सन एसोसिएटेड विद द ऑक्सफोर्ड मूवमेंट ही इज अ पर्सन हु इज आल्सो राइटिंग नॉवेल्स ओके ही इज कंसीडर्ड ही इज एसोसिएटेड विद राइटिंग टू इंपॉर्टेंट नॉवेल्स एंड द नेम्स ऑफ द नॉवेल्स आर कैलिस्टा एंड लॉस एंड गेन कैलिस्टा एंड Lawson Gain. These are the two important works in the novel formation that he is writing. Okay, so these are aspects that you have to keep in mind. No worries, no worries. That's perfectly all right. Why uh, I added this question to tell you that you know sometimes we only know a person. For example, Saint Augustine. We usually only do like you know we are only looking at City of God and City of Man. But Saint Augustine is also trying to talk about. the importance of like you know religion and how uh, religious values really are crucial so you must be aware about his thought process because you can get a question that can come from there okay now when you talk about new man new man actually new man actually was very very controversial and does he is an important aspect right important aspect when you're talking about your victorian uh, victorian age he is a person who is writing the tracts for the times the tracts for the times right he is writing his autobiography his autobiography is called apologia pro vita su his this is his autobiography this is the auto to biography that he is writing and net has given you a question on this as well now do you understand how the questions repeat net has given you a question apologia pro vita su as the autobiography of john henry newman this is an point that you have to keep in mind right this is something that you have to keep in mind the grammar of assent is also very autobiographical the grammar of assent is also very autobiographical very very autobiographical okay that is why uh, you know why what is the reason the reason is basically because of the fact that they are trying to talk about their own experiences uh, for example like you know i was reading this book because i am like you know a uh, um, like a devotee of the person and now here when you are talking about the book the book was like you know the miracles of uh uh like you know the lord the miracles of i I'm, i'm i'm like not naming the lord but the miracles of the lord so why because you know whenever you're talking about religious values you're trying to tell people about your experiences how did you experience it how was your experience uh, interacting with god or how was your experience coming uh, overcoming the problems of this earthly world so a lot of these writers who are dealing with religious works have to talk about their own experience they have to talk about how they were so for example when you talk about herman hess receiving the nobel prize herman hess is also in a way trying to capture his own problems that he was facing in order to find out the true spiritual path and that is the reason he was a true creator of siddhartha so uh, of course and herman hess is not a religious writer but john henry newman was a cardinal he was a cardinal he was a religious writer he had to talk about how, what was his feelings about religion right what did he understand when when we are talking about religion so that is important right okay so do keep this aspect in mind that you know a lot of these writers who are particularly religious writers are writing autobiographical works these religious writers are actually engaging in writing autobiographical works that is something that you have to keep in mind in a uh, king lear to which women has edmund sworn his love edmund sworn his love so just like university wits are important king lear is a must read work you have got questions in deep details that have been asked from majority of aspects of king lear king lear is a very important work king lear is a very important work especially from your net point of view very very important they have waiting for godo king lear right these are some texts that are coming again and again right so you have to way of the world these are plays that are being asked and that too in greater detail so you have to do them what is the right answer excellent excellent let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have got the right answer at the classroom platform i can see aditi nancy anand kuhu bilawat rachna abdullah but you abdullah no not cordelia cordelia se ulta nahi karta hai wo cordelia se nahi karta hai sneha has given the right answer kanchan brinda very good very good very good yes rabia yes rabia new man was the first anglican priest and then he became a cardinal priest very good very good right uh, so uh, that is true all right 
Okay, fantastic, fantastic, great, great, great. All right. So here, when you're talking about, right here, when you're discussing about King Lear, what you have to basically keep in mind is that King Lear is actually a verb. Now, first of all, a very common question that is asked, a very, very common question that is asked is now when you talk about the Elizabethan society, please remember, and this is something that I have already told you, when you are talking about the Elizabethan society, the Elizabethan society believed in chain of being. What did they believe in? They were people who believed in chain of being. What do we mean by chain of being? What do we mean by chain of being? Chain of being basically means that, you know, that we are having, for example, there are plants. Then over uh, the plants, you are having animals who are bigger than plants. And that is the reason animals can eat plants easily. Over animals, you are having humans. That is the reason humans are able to eat animals easily. Over humans, you are having the king who is ruling everyone. Then you have the fallen angels. Then you are having the fallen angels. Over the fallen angels are the good angels, right? The good angels. Over the good angels, you are having God. Over the good angels, you are having God. God is there. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, Pache Nida, ye bhi I will. Nida, it will be very helpful if you could raise this doubt via the greed up. Uh, uh, like you know doubt platform otherwise I will make a note of this don't worry about it okay I will make a note of this don't worry about it okay uh... yeah Draksha I'm just coming on to Indian writers and then we'll wrap don't worry about it uh, okay yes 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 of course of course I will I will do this is Nida who's asking about a session for chronology right you want chronology this is Nida Kossar right but still, Nida, if it will be very helpful, if you could raise it, that will be very helpful. Okay. All right. So here, very, very quickly, when you are talking about King Lear, King Lear is disobeying. He's breaking the chain of being. He's breaking the chain of being. Par, what do you have to write? You have to write down that the Elizabethans believed in the chain of being. The Elizabethan believed, Elizabethans believed in the divine right of the king. The divine right of the king. That the king is having the divine right to rule everyone. But King Lear is disobeying that and he's breaking the chain of being and he's giving the entire power. And he's giving the entire power. Whom is he giving the entire power he's giving the entire power to two daughters who are praising him to two daughters who are praising him according to other critics this play is dealing with your old age maladies this play is dealing with your old age maladies what do we mean by old age maladies old age maladies basically mean that you know just like in hindi we say satya gaye hain right so that is the reason king lear is not able to take a proper decision king lear is therefore not able to take a proper decision but king lear was considered to be very sad very ruthless king lear was considered to be so uh, like you know bad that when during the restoration time they were readapting the plays of shakespeare nehom tate had to give a happy ending to king lear nehom tate is a writer who is writing who is writing the second part of absalom and akatophel classroom students i hope you remember this Nehom Tate is writing the second part of Absalom and Akitophil, and he is the person who is criticizing Elikan Settle as well as Thomas Shadwell as OG and DOG. DOG and OG. If you remember, we had done this, keep on revising it that way. The list of poet laureates, Tate comes over there also. The list of poet laureates, that is also where Nehom Tate is coming. You have to revise stuff in this manner. You have to revise stuff in this manner. Edmund and Edgar. Edmund and Ed Edgar, this is a subplot of King Lear. The main plot of King Lear is King Lear trying to give the entire kingdom to Goneril and Regan, who are considered to be the Pelican sisters, who are considered to be the Pelican sisters. And what is he doing? After giving away his kingdom, he is not doing the right thing with Cordelia, who is a genuine person. And ultimately, both Cordelia and King Lear die. Right? There is a scene where you have blinding of Gloucester. So the subplot has Gloucester. Then you have Kent who is trying to ensure that you know he's helping. So all the characters, all the characters, each and every character who's coming in King Lear becomes important for you, becomes important for your analysis. You need to remember that. You need to do that.
okay so do keep that aspect in mind there are multiple other questions but what we'll do now is let's very very quickly come on to your indian writers let's very very quickly take a look at your indian writers we will of course continue with the questions don't worry now uh, we will be doing multiple questions so you don't have to worry too much about it okay so let's very very quickly take a look at your indian writers okay now when you are talking about indian english writings the first important thing that you have to understand when we are discussing about indian english writings is that indian english writings as a term right is a very problematic term it is a very very problematic term uh, people have called it uh, the third world literature people have called it the commonwealth literature people have called it uh, the literature the english literature coming from india uh, but please remember that indians have started hybridizing now there is a hybrid language that is being used indians have started using english as a medium to convey their stories indians have started using english as a medium to convey their indigenous tales their indigenous stories that is what they are they are really looking at now when you are talking about indian writings when we are discussing about any topic that is related to your indian writings there are certain pointers that you definitely have to keep in mind all right there are certain things that you definitely have to remember whenever we are looking at your indian writings first of all there are two parts one is the history of english in india all right which is a different category altogether the first point is the history of english in india and for history of english in india आपको बिल्कुल चिंता करने की जरूरत नहीं है द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश इन इंडिया देर इज दिस बुक विच वी विल बी कवरिंग देर इज जस्ट वन इंपॉर्टेंट बुक विच वील बी कवरिंग आई थिंक इट मस्ट बी माई ऑन माई स्टडी टेबल समवेयर बट एनी वे आई विल बी शोइंग यू दैट यू डोंट हैव टू वरी अबाउट इट आई विल tell you and there is also like you know an igno book set which is uh, i think mg 11 uh, which we will we'll of course paraphrase it for all of you in the marathon class and then you are sorted because that is what will help you to know about the history of english in india you know india was the first ever country where english was taught at a university level where english actually entered academia otherwise english was just a medium of studies english was never studied literature was never studied but in india for the very first time english was getting studied evaluated it was happening for the very first time here in the country so one aspect is history of english in india that will be covered in a separate unit and this is the topic that net has given you the second topic is the fiction writers the non fiction writers the short story writers the drama writers the poetry writers remember you are having your drama you have your poetry you are having your fiction you are having your non fiction you are having your prose you are having your journal the same things you have to do when you are talking about your indian writings the same things you have to undo uh, like you know understand and look at when you are talking about indian writings okay now please remember very often you will see the word indian fiction in english very often you will see the word indian fiction or indian writings in english that is now the acceptable version indian writings in english these are indian writings these are writings telling us about indian people these are writings that are telling us about how indians behave what are indians all about and that is what indian fiction is related to right so you can clearly see that we are not talking about translations of course there are translations that are getting conducted right there are translations that are getting conducted but at the same time what is our major concern our major concern is to look at our major concern is to look at the fiction that is telling us about indian nationalities the fiction that is telling us about indian stories written in english fiction that is telling us about indian stories conveyed in via the medium of english now the question which books can i refer to we will be covering everything all right in in coming times also we will be covering everything uh, we will be sharing the notes also but when you are talking about certain texts certain books which are cult books and if you are a phd aspirant you can actually have it in your library you can keep it as a part of your library of course it is the illustrated history of indian literature in english this was a 2003 book by arvind krishna 
Krishna Mehrotra. Okay, I will share if you want. I can share a PDF of the book if you want. Arvind Krishna Mehrotra, right? <clears throat> Arvind Krishna Mehrotra. But like I said, this will only help when you are talking about Arvind Krishna Mehrotra. Arvind Krishna Mehrotra can only help you to develop a, a sound foundational background because it was there in two thousand and three. Sorry, Mehrotra's book was coming in two thousand and three. But like I said, for example, in today's class, I will tell you about this. Is what I told you, Riots by Shashi Tharoor. This came in one of your PhD entrances, right? Or for example, we will talk about the graphic novel uh, in India, right? The graphic novel in India. Or for example, we will. Uh, and this question has also come in your PhD entrances. Or for example, if we will talk about any new writer who is writing after two thousand and three, Arvind Atika's The White Tiger has been made into a movie. Also, you can watch the movie. It is a beautiful movie that you can see, right? So that movie is also something that is watchable to understand. It's again coming after two thousand and three, so major developments in the field of Indian writings and Indians getting acknowledged outside are coming after two thousand and three. That is where you have a little bit of problem. Okay, then you have like you know Minakshi Mukherjee's Realism and Reality, which is a very good book. Uh, so Realism and Reality. Uh, she is like you know one of the people who is our alma mater. Like from my college itself, passed away. Um, like you know, professor passed away. pretty recently 2 to 3 years ago minakshi mukherji passed away right uh, but this was a book that was almost published in 1985 1985 but why this book is important because this book is telling you about the development of indian novel that how indians are appropriating the genre of novels how indians are looking at the genre of novels what is the response of indians when we are talking about the genre of novel writing that is what this book is trying to talk tell us right so that is the reason even though this book is written even though this book is getting written even though this book is getting published at a later age but still you are able to see that this book is pretty helpful Okay, then there is Priyamvada Gopal's the Indian English novel, the Indian English novel, which was very recently published. This was a two thousand and nine edition. This still has a lot of new details, especially the two thousand three to two thousand and nine six year mass period is getting covered over here by Priyamvada Gopal, right? So this is of course like you know a scholar called Priyamvada, Priyamvada. Priyamvada Gopal. So Priyamvada Gopal is also very very popular. Priyamvada Gopal is writing about. Uh, she's she's got this book called the Indian English Novel, which was like a must read for us in our syllabus. The Indian English Novel. the indian english novel and here of course she's trying to look at the later developments and how novel is still like you know a reigning genre even though a lot of questions come from drama and poetry you must take drama and poetry very seriously when you're talking about indian writers okay uh, i think some of you have also you you've told me about nair you've told me about shrinivas ayengar uh, that is perfectly fine so if you if you're following ayengar also uh, and, and if you're not looking at arvind krishna mehrotra that's fine uh so that that is perfectly all right but the idea is that you know uh, arvind krishna mehrotra minakshi mukherjee priyamvada gopal uh, nayar ayengar these are all people who are trying to look at they are trying to understand the connection of the 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 literature and the nation building how literature is contributing to the nation building and that is where i want you to look at rushdie's quote rushdie is also saying literature opened the mysterious for me literature was a way through which i explored the society literature was a medium through which i told the reality to everybody so for the indian writers literature is predominantly commitment literature is very important literature is something that you have to keep in mind it's important tool for them to convey their reality So point number one that goes into your notebooks is that these are some important works that you have to keep in mind, and and not telling you to read these works. These works have started coming now as questions. There was a question that was asked that the Indian English novel has been written by which writer, right? There was uh, like you know a, a question on the subtitle of one of their books that had come. So do keep that aspect in mind. Priyamvada Gopal, Minakshi Mukherjee, Arvind Krishna Mehrotra, these are very strong and powerful critics of Indian English writings. And by critics, I mean they are trying to evaluate. They are trying to evaluate literature for us. They are trying to evaluate literature from for us. that is what they are trying to do they are trying to tell us what is literature all about 
okay now please remember that there are multiple phases this is something that i told you in the previous lecture also but i told you that there are three broad phases when we are talking about indian writings in english there are three broad phases one is the period where you can actually see that you know that colonizers are coming the colonizer the colonialism uh, is of course spreading its root the colonizers are there the colonizers are trying to literally shape the consciousness of a of an entire nation colonialism is at the peak right and here you will have uh, like you know you you will we will be talking about uh, uh, rajmohan's wife we will be talking about like you know henry de rosio we will talk about torudat we will talk about uh, how we are having these writings that are coming in which are trying to talk us uh, which are trying to take us through the emergence of writing the emergence of writing and the culture of reading in india the emergence of writing and the culture of reading you know that was also not there that was also something that was not always there it wasn't something that was always like you know um indoctrinated to the indians this is something that you have to keep in mind you must remember that you must keep that in mind then you have this entire period where you have social novels or social work social writings that became very popular so one one is the period of emergence this is the period of emergence where people are trying to start using this foreign language to convey their thought and the second time is people like prem chand people like gandhi people like jawaharlal nehru they are using english for their social writings even the triumvirate raja rao uh, rk narayan is also mulk raj anand even the 30s triumvirate the 30s triumvirate they are very very popularly called as the 30s triumvirate you are having raja rao so raja rao is there you are having mulk raj anand right mulk raj anand and you've got questions come from kanthapura you've got questions that have been asked from raja rao's uh, like you know works they are definitely important and of course rk narayan rk narayan is like a favorite for your set exams you you keep on getting questions coming in and a very interesting writer creating this entire like you know fictional town for all of us which is representative of of indian societies which is representative of the the fight between tradition and modernity which is representative of how people are dealing in the new upcoming indian society okay uh nishad bachche orange book and blue book are the same the orange book and the blue book are the same ditto copy same okay you can ask me not even a letter has been changed you will not find any changes there are one or two minor changes they are the same okay the price is also the same i think if i'm not wrong if you're taking a second hand book i don't really know neetu i'm reading all uh, all your questions cultural studies i have already told you you guys can refer to pramod ke nair's book on cultural studies and uh, here when you're talking about right we have already discussed that we'll be doing the summary of pramod ke nair's cultural studies um, there is also a graphic guide to cultural studies that can be recommended um, i will be giving you additional support material also which will really help you out okay so that is something that we'll be looking at i'm looking at all your doubts don't worry i'll answer all of them it's just that i don't want the flow to break i'm just trying to give you a sense of what are the things which are very important okay then you have the most important period that is your post 1980s period after rushdie this is a period that is after rushdie after salman rushdie this is the period that you are having this is post colonial and this is contemporary for all of us this is the post colonial period this is the post colonial period and this is the contemporary period for all of us right this is contemporary this is post colonial this is something that we i don't know what's wrong with this pen uh yeah it is contemporary and it is post colonial period for all of us this is something that we have to keep in mind okay this is something that we have to remember from our examination point of view from our examination point of view we have the colonialism period where writers like torudat henry de rosio are writing where we have the writings uh, like you know which are trying to set pace for other writers to come they are trying to develop a culture of writing and reading right and then you have the novels of social writings and then finally you have the third part like this is something which is important for your net perspective so your heading can be uh, like you know topics to definitely cover for net topics in indian writings to definitely cover for net colonialism writing which we'll talk about writings of social nature social issues social novels that were very very popular 
एंड देन यू हैव द पोस्ट नाइनटीन एटीज पीरियड दिवस सिंह सोशल नॉवल्स लिखने का कोई फायदा नहीं है वी आर थिक स्किन पीपल इंडियंस ऑफकोर्स नो अभी नो करप्शन इज देयर बट वील स्टिल लाइक यू नो ट्राई टू फिगर आउट करे कोई जुगाड़ हो सकता है कैन वी हैव सम जुगाड़ आई डोंट स्टैंड इन लाइन यू नो आई एम आई आई डोंट रिली नो बट just ask anyone in your family you know you should you should actually do this just ask anyone in your family who owns a car and aapka uh, especially if you are in delhi to aajkal kya ho gaya aajkal aapka chalan katne lag gaya hai to chalan katne to lag gaya hai theek hai par isse delhi government ko koi fayda nahi hoga kyun koi fayda nahi hoga kyunki chalan kat to raha hai lekin koi pay nahi karta hai right wo pay agar for example if i have to sell my car what i can do is again there is a jugaad that is there i can just pay someone to just like you know get the case refer refer done i don't have to pay the entire chalan not all of us pay the entire chalan till the time of course like you know we are being stopped by a, a, a traffic police cop so so unfortunately we all know that these problems exist that is why the post rashtri writers are saying we are thick skinned kuch nahi ho sakta hai hamara as a community to social novels likhne ki to ab zarurat hi nahi hai and if you are talking about social novels please talk it in a different way because indians are not able to understand the problems indians are not able to understand the real issues they are not able to understand the real challenges <laughs> that is what like you know is being discussed that is what is being taught ठीक है सो ये आपको कवर करने हैं दीज आर द थ्री थिंग्स दैट यू हैव टू कवर अब इसमें यू नो ये दिखने में थ्री थिंग्स है तभी हम सेइंग दिखने में ये तीन चीजें हैं देर बी मल्टीपल राइटर्स हियर देर बी मल्टीपल राइटर्स हियर बट दीज आर द थ्री ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज दीज आर द थ्री ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज दैट यू हैव टू कवर All right. Now, when you are talking about novels, for example, ठीक है? For example, if I'm talking about some uh, very important Indian novels, not from examination point of view. When I'm talking about important Indian novels that are shaping how Indian novels are being written, some important in Indian novels that are shaping how you are writing the novels, that is also becoming important for all of us to understand. The first major work is Raja is Raj Mohan's wife. <coughs> is raj mohan's wife raj mohan's wife by bankim chandra chatterjee becomes your first example first prototype of an important novel that is coming from an indian it is very novel it is unique so raj mohan's wife becomes the first major example that we are having raj mohan's wife becomes the prototype and by bankim chandra chatterjee so this is by bankim chandra Bankim Chandra Chatterjee Bankim Chandra Chatterjee is writing this now when this work is coming it's originally coming in the uh, in the 1860s right it's coming in the 1860s and that is when we can see that you know indians have started writing novels indians have started appropriating the tradition of novel writing they started looking at the tradition of novel writing that is what they are looking at that is what they are discussing right but what are they trying to capture are they trying to capture just a story no for indians novel was never a means of capturing only the story it was a means of being like you know a story that is conveying an important aspect of indians or the life that is taken a life that is lived by indians or the indian experience trying to counter the misrepresentation that has been taking place so far that is what they are doing that is what they are engaging in right or for example when you talk about works like untouchable and uh, kanthapura they have come in your exam untouchable by mulk raj anand is a one day novel it is a one day novel like mrs dalloway by virginia wolf one day novel means the entire action has been taken place during the course of one day the entire action has taken place during the course of one day kanthapura by raja rao again has the like you know has the entire narrative of hari katha sushmita from classroom bachche yahan par aapka question aa jata hai frame narrative ka frame narrative is ki maine i am having a story but how am i conveying the story heart of darkness i am conveying the story within frames various frames right and when i'm talking about say wuthering heights i have the 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 entire frame of lockwood then i have the frame of nelly dean those are the frames that i'm having 
right? Those are the frames that I'm conducting. So please keep this aspect in mind that when I'm talking about these novels, look at the way that they are being written. Kanthapura by Raja Rao, Untouchables, Rajmohan's Wife, there's a huge coming. Rajmohan's Wife is a simple story, is a simple domestic tale by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. Untouchable, look at the kind of, within the span of 60 years, Indian novels are developing. They're saying this is the format that we will use to convey what has happened with our nation we tell you the story of what it is to be a nation please take this opportunity to understand that you know whenever we are talking about literature whenever we are talking about literature how is the Indian aesthetics developing how can you see a development that is taking place right yes Neetu this is the first major novel that you are having in Indian English writings this is the first major novel by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee Raj Mohan's wife Raj Mohan's wife which is there SM, we will come on to that. We will come on to Bengal Renaissance. We will talk about how. So, so very good question. So, SM uh, is asking about Bengal Renaissance. See, for example, when you talk about, when you're talking about Ghare Bare by Rabindranath Tagore. Achha, ab ye dekho, suno. Question, aapka net, uh, aapke net mein nahi, aapke entrance mein kya aya tha? Rabindranath Tagore has just not written novels. He's uh, not just written poetry. He's also, he was trying to write plays. But when you're talking about the plays, you know, there's a very different history of Indian theater altogether. You had the Parsi theater, you know, the Parsi theater was very popular. And the Parsi theater was only the name that was given. Otherwise, Indians were performing, Sikhs were performing, Muslims were performing in the Parsi theater in Bombay. And when you're talking about Tagore, Tagore was also writing plays. And this is a question that has been asked. Two of uh, his plays were asked that, you know, which play has been written by Tagore? So please remember, when we are talking about Bengal Renaissance, its best representative, best representatives are people like Tagore. Tagore in the Ghare Bare is telling you about Sandeep, Nikhilesh and Bimala, that Bimala's Nikhilesh is, is Bengal Renaissance. I will educate my wife. I will give education to my wife. I will ensure that my wife is getting educated. But look what he does. Look what he's doing, what Tagore is showing you. Tagore is showing you that I can be, I can be a person who's giving you liberal education, but I want you to be liberal within the constraints that I have defined. Be educated, be like, you know, completely awakened and enlightened. And look at Bimala, she's not ready for the education. She's falling in love with Sandeep. She thinks that, you know, my husband is absolutely effeminate. She's not having any uh, infatuation. And Ghare Bare is using, is using, like, you know, multiple perspective. You've got the story from Nikhilesh's perspective. You've got the story from Bimala's perspective. You've got the story from Sandeep's perspective. And again, epistolary format is also being explored here. So Indian novelists don't take them like, you know, for granted. It's not that it's their second language. So they are not able to produce works. They are being absolutely astute when it comes to their production. They are being very astute. Yes, Baka is the character in Untouchable, right? So they are being very astute, be it art of characterization. See, aspects of novel me, E.M. Foster kya kya kehta hai? Plot aapka important hai, storyline aapki important hai, jo plot me aaki hai, characters aapki important hai. Then what is the theme that you're trying to in, uh, like, you know, convey to the audiences? Indian writers are trying to fare immaculately well on all three aspects. They are trying to fare immaculately well on all the three aspects. They're very, very particular and they are looking at all these three aspects properly, right? That is something that you have to keep in mind. This was important for all of them, right? And from there, you know, and, and waiting for the Mahatma. Waiting for the Mahatma is again by R.K. Narayan. Waiting for the Mahatma. R.K. Narayan waiting for the Mahatma. R.K. Narayan is a brilliant, brilliant writer. When you're talking about R.K. Narayan, when you're talking about R.K. Narayan, please understand that, you know, R.K. Narayan in the English teacher, what is he talking about? He's talking about how this teacher doesn't know English, but still is able to create this, this successful cr class by, by using intelligence and wit, wit, right? Trying to capture the Indian society. We'll get the work done. Right. F for example, uh, like I, I, I hate giving this example. Uh, so, so for example, if, if your if if one of your parent does not know how to properly work on computer, but they'll get the work done from you, and then they will tell the others that you know they have done it. So, what is it? They're jugadu. They know how to get the work done. 
right so essentially whenever you are talking about these people have actually got the soul of each and every indian and they are trying to present the soul of the indians properly with astute knowledge of form how they can experiment with form look at arun joshi for example the strange case of billy biswas trying to use existentialism themes themes of existentialism and trying to tell you the same thing as herman hess was trying to talk about in siddhartha or heat and dust right uh, by ruth prafar jhabwala heat and dust again very important and informative work or anita desai writing cry the peacock so you can clearly see that whenever we talk about the development whenever we talk about the development of writing and particularly the development of indian novels you are able to notice what do you have to notice is that indian novelists are not using they are not using so they are they are of course using like you know the way the language is of course the britishers but the 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 subject of the novel the manner in which it is getting conveyed right uh, so the 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 entire soul of the piece soul of the piece basically means what is the crux what is the essence what is the major theme that the work wants to convey everything is indian indian english novels are trying to invoke Engli indianness not englishness indianness i want you to understand this it is not englishness that we are running forward for we want to tell everyone what does it mean to be an indian right what does it mean to be an indian that is what we are talking about that is what we are looking at but when you talk about 1980s this trend actually is like you know a little destabilized because they're like okay ab define kar liya what is what it means to be an indian to aap logo ki copies mein kya jayega that these all novels arun joshi anita desai uh, nantara sehgal uh, rk narayan mulkraj anand raja rao Uh, or bankim chandra chatterjee they are trying to represent what it is to be an indian right they are trying to talk about indian stories and indian themes but after that after you define what it is and to be an indian now you are looking at other issues you are looking at other cosmopolitan issues you are saying and you know why this change happened this change happened of course because of the fact that you had your new economic policy your new economic policy of privatization liberalization and globalization that had taken place in 1991 rashti was already telling the indians to move towards this globalization process that part be a participant to to this change that is taking place and that is the reason you know who are the best writers who are representing a changed way of novel writing of course salman rushdi is one of the pioneering writers who is heralding this change he's starting this entire process of change but people like amitav ghosh people like arundhati roy right so people like ghosh uh people like amitav ghosh people like amit choudhury amit choudhury who's writing a brave new world is also the writer who's famous for his publication or critical analysis of poetry of d h lawrence he is this is a direct question he is famous for his poetry analysis of poetry on d h lawrence he's done an analysis of poetry of d h lawrence not novels of d h lawrence but poetry of d h lawrence which only an indian writer or a post colonial writer could see that you know you're missing out you've you've done d h lawrence oh wow what what amazing novel is but what about who will analyze his poetry who will analyze and look at the inferior works the lesser known works or the works that the society did not consider to be appropriate so second part becomes that you know a lot of writers after after this period uh, like you know the 1980s period like arundhati roy amitav ghosh amit choudhury there is also a person called alan seeley alan seeley alan seeley alan seeley who comes into the picture all these are very important writers ठीक है सो फ्रॉम योर नोट्स विल एक्चुअली टेक फ्रॉम इंडियननेस फ्रॉम इंडियननेस एंड डिफाइनिंग इंडियननेस यू आर गोइंग टू कॉस्मोपॉलिटन थीम्स व्हाट डू आई मीन बाय कॉस्मोपॉलिटन थीम्स दे आर लाइक भाई बाहर के लोग हमें नहीं समझ पा रहे हैं बाहर के लोग दे डोंट वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज़ दे हैव अ पिक्चर ऑफ इंडियंस ओनली तो लेट अस राइट अबाउट सम थिंग्स दैट थीम्स दैट इवन दे कैन एसोसिएट let us try to represent and make ourselves more and and of course this is not to just get validated from the west but to, just to tell our stories to the west just to tell the stories just to tell our stories to the west that is what we are looking at right that is what we are discussing that is what we are interested in
right uh, and and when you talk about for example amitav ghosh is not just a shadow line but you get questions from the hungry tide you get questions from uh, shashi tharoor's like you know the great uh, indian epic that he is talking about he is reworking the mahabharata and he is also writing the riot the riot is a novel that he is writing upmanyu chatterjee english august has been asked in your entrances so many times kiran desai the inheritance of loss arvind adika the recipient of the man booker prize and one of the second youngest uh, person to to win the prize because when he got the prize he was 32 33 years old so clearly you are able to see that a lot of these people are trying to ensure that we get a proper idea we try to get a proper idea of uh, like you know what is it that is leading to the development of indian aesthetics अच्छा अब ये बात हो गई नॉवल्स की सो वी विल फर्स्ट लुक एट नॉवल्स विच वॉज सोशल नॉवल्स नॉवल्स दैट आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम राजमोहन वाइफ ऑल द वे दे आर गोइंग ऑन टू पीपल लाइक एलन सीले राइट मोर कॉस्मोपोलिटन नॉवल्स द सेकेंड दैट वी हैव टू लुक एट इज शॉर्ट स्टोरीज ऑल्सो डोंट इग्नोर शॉर्ट स्टोरीज प्लीज डोंट इग्नोर शॉर्ट स्टोरीज योर शॉर्ट स्टोरीज आर ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट गीता हरिहरन इज अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन दैट यू गेट इन योर एंट्रेंसेज वेन यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडियन राइटर्स हुआ ट्राइंग देयर हैंड्स ऑन शॉर्ट स्टोरीज गीता हरिहरन हैज बिकम वन ऑफ द पाइनियरिंग शॉर्ट स्टोरी राइटर्स Geeta Hariharan is very popular Geeta Hariharan when it comes to her short story compilation is extremely important or when we are talking about a northeast writer i'm sure some of you who are coming from northeast university would know about Tamsula Ao Tamsula Ao right Tamsula Ao and Tamsula Ao comes in your uh, entrances also particularly if some of you had given your uh, assam set you you probably would have like you know read this and you you would have gone for for your exam tamsula ao tamsula ao was um, there tamsula ao these are people these are people who are writing short story is for all of us right so when when for example when you're talking about tamsula ao she's writing liburnum for my head liburnum for my head is there liburnum for my head this was there in 2009 liburnum from my head had come tamsula ao had written it tamsula ao was writing about it right and very very popular northeast short story writer we will of course look at some of the short stories which are there right and uh, when we talk about the short story of geeta hariharan remains of the day is a very short story remains of the feast is considered to be the the proper name remains of the feast uh, which is there so what are these short story trying to capture these short stories are trying to capture these short narratives or what sadat hasan manto has called afsanas of india you're trying to capture the afsana of india you're trying to capture the afsana of indianness you're trying to capture the afsana of what it means to just like you know capture the entire histories that is what you're looking at that is what you're interested in yes 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 absolutely absolutely that is something that you have to keep in mind uh that you know brinda is right okay so so please do keep this aspect in mind do remember this this aspect becomes crucial this aspect becomes important you need to keep this aspect in mind all right uh what are the classroom students discussing uh, can't see a question okay uh anyway so so do keep that aspect in mind do remember this this is something that you have to remember that you know whenever we are talking about indian writers you have to segregate it because that is how the syllabus is defined your approach our approach towards understanding indian writers will be the development of english in india that will be first part and the second part will be looking at looking at these writers looking at these writers and their works right so that is something that you have to keep in mind yes of course of course yogi and hall also they can also come in now certain uh, for example certain very important uh, characters or certain very important writers or their works which are very important inheritance of loss is a very important work of kiran desai anita desai her mother has been nominated for the booker but kiran desai got the, the booker prize for a second novel itself kiran desai managed to receive the booker for his second novel itself the the inheritance of loss dealing with the backdrop written in the backdrop of the gorkhaland movement the gorkhaland movement 
right and inheritance of loss is like you know trying to capture can you just see that there is a shift from the social novels it is trying to capture a the diasporic experience b it is also trying to capture in a way the characters and how the characters are actually in a way are actually in a way in a state of mess complexity they have forget about like you know figuring out their roots they've forgotten who they are or what essentially do they want to do a number of other important things actually come in when we are talking about this right when we are discussing about this so please keep that in mind that there are certain works there are certain works which are very very crucial for all of you right there are certain important writings that become important that you have to do that you have to make sure that you know you're revising you are completing it right how uh, inheritance of loss is telling you about biju it is telling you the story of sai right and you know uh, see see the best the beauty of these writers is they'll constantly fluctuate amitav uh, amit choudhury also look at the brave new world he's fluctuating between bengal and uh, like you know uh, abroad so there is this constant flux imagine a period before the lockdown or before the pandemic we were not we were traveling so much but now we've suddenly halted we've suddenly understood it's okay to be at home it's not always important to be always at the airport or always at the railway station and undertaking those trips so now there is a different type of literature that will start emerging from now on there'll be a completely different kind of uh, literature that will start emerging and you know how the novel uh, is getting uh, taking us back into the 1980s time to be precise 1986 that is what inheritance of loss is dealing with right uh, you've got questions come from the retired judge they've asked you about jemubai patel so that is of course there the entire story is written in the backdrop of the gorkha land movement the entire tale is written uh, like you know looking at the backdrop of the gorkha land movement that also something that you know that becomes important this is what good reads has to say this is what good reads has to say about the inheritance of loss in a crumbling isolated house at the foot of mount kanchenjunga in the himalayas lives an embittered judge lives an embittered judge right so this is jemu bai patel that we are talking about who wants only to retire in peace when his orphaned granddaughter sai arrives on his doorstep the judge cook watches over her distractedly for his thoughts are often on his son piju who is hopscotching from one gritty new york restaurant to another kiran desai's brilliant novel published to huge acclaim is a story of joy and despair her characters face numerous choices that majestically illuminate the consequences of colonialism and it collides with the modern world writers like kiran desai are trying to capture that you know colonialism has done a lot of harm it is not that you know the colonizers came and they have gone i would just hide myself so that you can read this is something that the good reads is talking about right this is a description that the good reads is giving this is a description that the good reads is actually talking about the good reads is describing it as this so do keep that in mind that you know whenever these novelists whenever these writers are coming they aren't the same writers as your social novelists no they are different they are they might be presenting similar themes that you know fighting against power fighting against oppression but they are all right but they are all very crucial they are all very crucial okay so this is something that you have to keep in mind the hungry tide the hungry tide a very important work of amitav ghosh amitav ghosh a student of delhi university very famous for the shadow lines when shadow lines was introduced in the delhi university he was very like you know he said that i i couldn't control my overwhelming feeling because the university that i studied in is now teaching my work is teaching my work a person who is trying to literally be a representative writer Gosh is not leaving any stone unturned to talk about the new kind of narrative that is coming in to talk about the new kind of narr yes ropashi absolutely these are the major characters these are the most important characters that you are having okay these are the most important characters that you are having now whenever we talk about amitav ghosh amitav ghosh is actually representing a new uh, like you know a new era altogether a new era that is trying to uh, and you know there is uh, there is uh, there's actually a web uh, there's a website that he has it's called amitavghosh.com you can actually see a majority of his works being summarized for all of you 
Rather, the next slide is actually the hungry tide. What Amitav Ghosh's website is talking about, right? That is what Amitav Ghosh's website is talking about when we are talking about his works. So he's dedicated a website uh, to explain his works. He is the recipient, of course, of Gyan Peeth Award. He's got multiple awards altogether, and he's a Padma Shri. He is a Padam Shri. He's got the Gyan Peeth Award. Very popular for, like you know, uh, for his writings, which are trying to tell us about the new world that is emerging, a new world that is emerging. Okay, very very popular. Born, of course, in Calcutta. Uh, he had gone to Dehradun, and then of course he came to Delhi, and thereafter he left ab abroad. Right thereafter, and he, and he grew up. He grew up in India, Bangladesh, as well as Sri Lanka. He grew up in all these places. He grew up in all these places. And you know when he was in uh, so 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 this was a question that was asked in one entrance I don't know why when he was in Dehradun he was at Dune School Dehradun Dehradun he was in Dune School Vikram Seth Vikram Seth and Ram Guha Ramachandra Guha is there Ram Guha the historian they were his contemporaries Ram Guha and Vikram Seth were his contemporaries Ram Guha and Vikram Seth were his contemporaries right that is uh, his time that he had spent. Uh, that was of course there now uh, see the shadow lines is of course a very important work the shadow lines has been coming uh, shadow lines received the sahitya academy award this is something that you can keep in mind it's not been asked but you should remember it is a part of uh, like you know now a couple of universities have included the shadow line have included the shadow lines the shadow lines and you know shadow lines is going back to what benedict anderson talks about it goes back to what benedict anderson is talking about about imagined communities that you know we have just created these boundaries imagined communities we have just created these unnecessary boundaries which were not even required these these boundaries were not required at all but we've created these boundaries and now it's so hard for all of us to just get out of those boundaries that have been created right and and you can you can see that you know the the book is trying to capture the book is trying to capture uh, a historical event uh, it is trying to to tell you that you know how the historical records are questionable also and yet he is trying to look at the historical records to talk about how the riots had taken place to talk about how the riots had taken place Ghosh was not just writing about the Bengal riots, the West Bengal riots, when uh, you got the news of partition. Uh, but you know, uh, he's he's also discussing about he's also discussing about uh, the 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 Delhi riots, the Delhi Sikh riots, in one of his short stories. And of course, the Calcutta chromosome, the palace, the glass palace, the hungry tide, the sea of poppies. These are very very popular works that he's writing. These are very popular works that he is trying to capture, that he is trying to write, uh, because of the fact that you know he he genuinely believes in giving the Indian narrative, giving the Indian version, right? So so those are of course there, and and the Sea of Poppy is uh, or when you're talking about the Hungry Tide, for example, look at this what the Goodreads has to talk about the Hungry Tides, or oh, forget about the Goodreads. Look at what he has to say. This is from the AmitavGosh.com. This is from AmitavGosh.com and AmitavGosh.com actually talks about, this is talking about Hungry Tide. In between the sea and the plains of Bengal on the eastmost coast of India lies an immense archipelago of islands. Some of these islands are vast and some no long, larger than sandbars. Some have lasted through recorded history while others have just washed into being. These are the Sundarbans. The beautiful lands. Very different from how a geography student will probably, like, you know, define the Sundarbans. Here, there are no borders to divide fresh water from salt, river from sea, even land from water. The tides reach, this is a very important line, this is a very important line. The tides reach more than 200 miles inland and every day thousands of acres of mangrove forests disappear only to re-emerge hours later. For hundreds of years, only the truly dispossessed and the hopeless and dreamers of the world have braved the man-eaters and the crocodiles who rule there to eke a precarious existence from the unyielding mud. Now, why have I highlighted this is because, you know, when you're talking about the hungry tide, uh, He's, of course, telling you the entire story, but look at the way that he's presenting it. Look at the way that he's actually presenting it. 
okay uh, you know you people should actually understand this because you know uh, uh, like you know you you guys are having the rohingya tragedy that is taking place so even right now when the rohingyas we are talking about the rohingya refugees this work is actually talking about this work is actually talking about how like you know the refugees were mistreated the refugees were mistreated at the hands of the bengali government how they were how they were forced to stay in certain areas just because they do not belong to the country how you are inhumanly treating them and these are questions of humanities that he is trying to raise and what is the point of being the largest democracy yes we will be coming on to that also sm don't worry about it okay we will be you know, talking about those aspects also see basically what you have to keep in mind is that these are all important writings these are all important works for example when we are talking about the riot by shashi tharoor this is again coming in your papers you're getting questions that are related to the riot why are you getting questions related to the riot whereas like you know shashi tharoor is a very contemporary writer because despite being a contemporary writer he is able to capture he is able to capture a very important aspect of indian writings and what is that aspect of indian writings that he's trying to talk about the diversity the expansive diversity that is clearly visible the expansive amount of like you know things that are coming across in this big huge nation that is what we are discussing right there was a question that had come what is the subtitle of the riot the riot is called a novel the riot is called a novel by shashi tharoor the subtitle is a novel the subtitle is a novel right and when we are talking about the riot when we are talking about the riot what is the riot basically talking about what is the riot uh, like you know basically trying to discuss is it trying to literally uh, come to terms with the riot no here we are, we are actually talking about here we are actually talking about how shashi tharoor is taking a look right how shashi tharoor is is trying to uh, take a look at uh, some various important aspects that are taking place across it. and you know certain things that we often ignore so 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 these are certain important aspect the great indian novel is written by shashi tharoor which is a reworking of mahabharata this is a question that comes the great indian novel by shashi tharoor is a reworking of the mahabharata and it has been written by tharoor right and here you are having here you are having the riot which is focusing on the northern part of india right northern part of india and you know here what we can see is that he is trying to talk about he is trying to talk about uh, the story that is uh, that is being formed like you know the indian story after the 1970s the indian story after the 1970s right uh, so why indian uh, history after the 1970s becomes very important the indian history after the 1970s uh, becomes important because of the fact that you're dealing with the emergency and the aftermath of the emergency and the development of political parties and the change of face of indian history who killed 24 year old prishtala hart and why would anyone want to murder this idealistic american student so here basically what you have to remember is that you know the riot by shashi tharoor is trying to take a look at the nasty events that are taking place he is trying to tell you that events which are showing you that you know humans lack compassion events such as these are trying to show you the the the, the fact that you know that humans are heartless creatures humans aren't really able to compassionately deal with things yes madhuri not only sea of poppies you will have multiple questions right you will have multiple questions no 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 i am not fond of uh yeah we're we just ending i am just going to be who's this person kanchan is really worried kanchan is like when will this class end okay you feel tired yeah yeah we will we will talk about that rakesh don't worry about it now now please see what you have to focus on uh keeping things very very crisp and short see whenever we will talk about indian writings whenever we will be looking at indian writings how will we be covering indian writings first of all let me give you an example how we will be covering indian writings so that you don't have any uh, like you know any sort of issue so for example for example let's just take this example that you know this is like for example this is uh, a piece about balachandran rajan i'm just giving you an example <clears throat> 
how we will cover indian writings okay now balachandran rajan is a person balachandran rajan is a person who is of course trying to show he is writing like you know a, a very important work that is dealing with the partition he is talking about the partition he is also trying to bring in the aspect of realism as well as fantasy so magical realism was becoming very popular during the time magical realism was also being used uh, by multiple people but balachandran rajan's fantasy is not the fantasy of magical realism balachandran rajan's fantasy is the dealing with uh, what like you know what uh, you you can call uh, the, the the kind of a fairy tale story or you you can say the element of fiction that is coming in the story a happy ending that you're bringing in right and he's a person who's also trying to capture the partition experience he's also a person who's trying to capture the partition experience so a we will look at a writer we will talk in one or two lines about the most important themes that are, that are associated with the writer then we will discuss in a very crisp manner some aspects related to his works like look at the dark dancer the dark dancer is looking at the east west conflict the east west conflict it is and you know this was a very common theme a very common theme of indian writers particularly before the rashti period talking about tradition and modernity and the fight between tradition and modernity the fight between tradition and modernity right they are telling you that it it is not that the post partition world is everything happy and idyllic the post partition world also has challenges how krishnan krishnan is actually loving british cynthia but you know he has to have this loyalty towards his wife kamala so a lot of your pictures that were dealing with like you know pura pashchim etc these kind of movies were trying to capture these these themes properly the the entire the entire fight between tradition and modernity and of course in the pictures they would show tradition winning but but the actuality was that modernity was slowly and steadily coming up and trying to erode the values the, the so called traditions uh, that were used right so that is essentially that is essentially how we will be approaching each and every writer this is like a prototype this is like a prototype that you know this is uh, we will have a writer we will look at the most important theme of the writer then we will look at some works of the writer and like you know summaries uh, of certain important works that is how we'll be looking at it okay anuradha so sweet thank you so much thank you so much that's so sweet ha huh? you know if a child after 2 hours also wants you to continue i think that's the biggest compliment so anuradha me god bless you anuradha kumari you are very sweet child so this is the approach that we will be following but i hope in today's lecture you're very clear that we have to deal with the literature that is coming very please listen to this okay literature that is coming during the colonialism period here we will talk about writers like toruda henry de rosio we will talk about bankim chandra chatterjee we will talk about sri aurobindo we will talk about the bengal renaissance as some of you We're talking about right. Uh, so a lot of your Arvin Krishna Mehrotra actually covers this part. Okay, then we will be talking about your social works, right, or your social writings. Here we will cover, as I told you, here we will cover everything that is coming between, like you know, you can say or or you can say before. before 1980s before midnight's children before midnight's children and a little after your uh, say so so this period can be like you know you can just consider this period to be like 1900 to 1980 uh, all right this is the period that we'll be covering here writings related to uh, realism writings related to your social issues writings which were related to your political concerns and political freedom they will come then finally we will go on to the last leg and the last leg is going to be your post rashti contemporary or post colonial era which will be very important we will be analyzing novels which are very crucial we will be looking at your short stories we will be looking at this is the syllabus for indian writers we will be looking at graphic novels in india we will be looking at your partition novels in india we will be looking at this is very 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 important modern indian drama modern indian drama i don't know how much of it can you see indian drama because you get many questions coming from modern indian drama you get multiple questions that are usually asked from your modern indian drama 
which are important okay so do keep this in mind this is the stuff so today i hope at least you're clear that you know that what do we have to cover see you know what happens is that agar ek hi book karke you would have cleared entrances then obviously we would have had a larger percentage of people clearing the exam but that is unfortunately not the reality but you will have to understand what is important for you when you're talking about a topic and indian writers often becomes problematic and please remember when uh, when uh, what are the three most important texts which are dealing with indian criticism arvind krishna mehrotra minakshi mukherjee and priyamvada gopal these are the three prominent works that are telling you about the development of indian art about the development of indian craft right then who are the post rashti writers arundhati roy salman rashti uh, to a certain extent anita desai also then kiran desai comes around into this category you've got your alan sili uh, sili uh, who comes over here amitav ghosh amit choudhary all these people are coming under this category modern indian drama that is extremely crucial for your development right that that will be really important okay so who uh, shadow lines is telling you about the fact that you know these boundaries that we have created because of which we are fighting for example if you uh, i hope all of you start uh, like you know watching i'll i'll recommend some channels also that you should watch now when you watch news you can see that you know there was this concept of infiltration and when you are talking about chinese infiltration why are we of course we need to be bothered about it but but you know people like ghosh will say why are we so excessively concerned whereas there are other things that we can be talking about right it's not that we should be open to anyone trying to like you know uh, trying to just come and um, victimize us that is also not what he's trying to say but he's saying don't get obsessed with boundaries try go beyond boundaries these lines are very shadow and written record cannot be trusted written record also has errors it is written from the perspective of your uh, like you know the mighty acha now one suggestion that i have it will be very interesting uh, if like you know if you are genuinely interested to improve your indian writings if you genuinely want to improve your indian writings i will humbly suggest you that you know you should invest in your 11th and 12th standard political science books you should you should get like you know the the 11th and 12th standard political science ncrts try to read them they are very simple books right because agar aapko wo aa jayega na aapko pata chal jayega ki ye emergency ho raha hai because people like shashi tharoor people like amitav ghosh people like arundhati roy people like jhumpa lahri also to a certain degree and extent okay these are all writers who are trying to capture important episodes in indian political history or indian modern history after independence that is what they are capturing to agar ek chhota sa advice hai so i would say that you know if you take if you take a look and these are very simple books which are very easily available also you can see them um you know if i take this out the entire stack of books will come on my head but what you can do is what you you guys can do is just like you know and and you don't even have to invest actually go online aapko cbse ki website pe wo ncert ki book mil jayegi ncert ki website pe you'll get that book free uh, free of cost available online just read it a little jaise baithe hue ho bahut sara time hai so what you can do is you can just read a little it will help you a little ठीक है तो वी विल वी विल ऑफ कोर्स कंटिन्यू विद दिस बट आई होप दिस इज क्लियर व्हाट ऑल वी हैव टू कवर ओके इफ यू हैव एनी कंसर्न्स प्लीज फील फ्री टू लेट मी नो अबाउट इट एंड टुमारो व्हाट वील डू इज टुमारो वी विल ट्राई टू कवर वन सच टॉपिक वन सच टॉपिक वी विल कवर कंप्लीटली ऑफ इंडियन राइटर्स अलॉन्ग विद लाइक यू नो द टेन डूज एंड डोंट्स ओके थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग थैंक यू कामया दैट्स वेरी स्वीट ऑफ यू आई होप सम स्टूडेंट्स आर स्टिल अवेक एट द क्लासरूम Yeah, Madhuri. I will be sharing. Uh, oh, uh, Madhuri Singh. One day novels. But ye one day novels ka example is uh, your Untouchable. Untouchable is a one day novel. Mrs. Dalloway is a one day novel. Okay, Madhuri. These are two one day novels that we are having. Tomorrow's session is at seven pm and ten pm. Okay, tomorrow's session is at seven pm and ten pm. I will see you guys tomorrow. Please take very good care of yourself. And if you have any concerns, do let me know. We will continue with a very important topic related to Indian writings also tomorrow. And uh, we will of course continue with the uh, the main theme also that we have. I hope you are clear with what we have to look at when we are talking about Indian writers. Thank you so much for joining in, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. God bless. Bye.